Here we go, another truck, work truck. This is a Ram 3500 crew cab, six and a half foot bed. As you can hear and see the logo on the side, this is a Cummins 6.7 liter, 385 horsepower, 930 foot pounds of torque. It's a 2018 uh, with the Laramie package. It is used, slightly used. Uh, leaf spring suspension on the 3500s. Uh, the 2500s have a five link coil suspension. Uh, this is a sport appearance package. So you got your blacked out rims, blacked out logos, uh, even blacked out headlights. Uh, fully painted bumper and grill. No chrome on this at all. Got your tow hooks. Um, this thing can tow I can't remember what the, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen, but it's well over 20,000 pounds. And the payload, that's something that I want to show you. I showed you what the 1500 was, that Laramie Longhorn. I want to show you something. You look inside your truck, I'm going to turn you sideways. The combined weight of occupants and cargo should never exceed 3,751 pounds. That is a lot of payload. It's almost 4,000 pounds. Uh, this is factory tinted windows. Uh, it's got the, the XM satellite in there. Something else that you can get for this infotainment center in here, I'll show you in a second, is live traffic information and live weather. It has a Doppler weather uh, option on there. Uh, this truck has the, um, what you call it here, uh, the fifth wheel package. So this is pre-constructed with all the connection points to drop your fifth wheel hitch in here. Uh, LED bed lights. One thing that the Rams don't have in this generation, I think, I'm pretty sure they changed that in 2019, is the tailgates are not a soft open. So if you open them, they slam down. That's your diesel and your def fluid. Diesel exhaust fluid. A lot of people think that's a joke. What do you mean, diesel exhaust fluid? I got the heated seats on, heated steering wheel. Um, this does not have the convenience package, so you still have to have push a key into the dash and you have to hit the key fob to open the, the doors. Um, the 1500 that I showed you, the Lamy Longhorn, had the convenience package where you just grab the handle of the door and it automatically opens and it has push button start. Uh, another option that the convenience package gets uh, is rain sensing wipers and automatic dimming high beams, which is pretty cool. I've tested that out quite a bit and it works great. So I got you pointed at the infotainment screen and this is your weather radar and as you can see you have live Doppler radar wherever you're located. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. It works off of satellite and not cell phone so you can use this without cell phone coverage. Another thing that's new for 2018 is the ability to have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Still on the fence if it's worth it or not. Um, I, a lot of people swear by both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now, this truck happens to be used. It's a 2018 and it actually has some decent miles on it. Uh, 27,000 miles for 2018. Uh, one thing I showed you on the 1500 Laramie Longhorn was how many miles it had been used for towing. Got you pointed at the screen here, and uh, you can see there's no trailer brake connected. But when you do hook up your trailer brakes, it starts logging the miles. And so you, there's the total miles, 27,000. So almost half of all the miles that are on this truck are used to tow, 13,000. Um, probably a fifth wheel camper. There's a whole bunch of other information on the screen up here you got your speedometer this one here gets you a ton of information uh, this tells you how many hours are on the truck it's been idling for 115 hours 
driving 630 hours and a total of 745 hours um, transmission temperature coolant temperature oil temperature oil pressure uh, this one here this is a pretty cool um, screen and this meter here let me see if it'll uh, uh, yeah you can see. there's the it shows you how much PSI your turbo is using or creating uh, this side here is for your exhaust brake. On the, the dashboard, there's a button for an exhaust brake. There's two options, on and automatic. So in automatic mode, every time you push your brake, the, the exhaust brake will kick on also. Fuel filter life, oil life, uh, transmission temperature. Uh, and this here, I think all new trucks have this. I think it's great. Um, this is your tire pressure monitoring system. You can see at the front we're right around 60 and you're supposed to be at 80 pounds in the rear. Um, once that drops down to I believe 5 or 10 below um, the factory spec you'll get a warning light that you have low tire pressure. Now this is a 3500 and the specs, the towing specs and the payload capacity on this truck far far exceed anything well, anything that I currently need. Now, what would you need nearly 4,000 pounds of payload capacity and the, the ability to pull 23,000 plus pounds? Um, well, the big thing would be a camper, a giant camper, fifth wheel camper, or a giant truck bed camper. Those truck bed campers easily get over 4,000 pounds. If you had uh, like a backhoe and a big low boy flatbed trailer, that would be a great use for this truck. Uh, I do think it's overkill for me uh, and probably a lot of you to have the 3500. It rides a little bit rougher than a 2500, but not that much. I thought it was going to be a much harsher ride, uh, it, and it surprised me. Another thing that surprised me is how fast this thing accelerates. Uh, the Ison transmission that comes with the 3500 and that extra 130 foot-pounds of torque that comes in the 3500. You can really feel it in the seat of the pants meter. Also, this is the lightest option uh, for the heavy-duty truck. The shortest option uh, outside of getting just a standard cab with just the front seats. So it's a crew cab short bed, which is the shortest wheelbase. That means you have a shorter frame, shorter bed, shorter drive shaft, shorter everything, and that's weight. So on the long bed, it's the longest wheelbase. Therefore, you got the longest frame. Uh, the Mega Cab is nine inches shorter than a long bed, but still longer frame, huge cab, more glass, more everything. Uh, so this is a light option. And man, does this thing get up and move. Now, why am I so fond of the Ram? Well, it's all about that Cummins diesel motor. There's just nothing on the market that compares to it. Uh, Power Stroke, uh, they ruined their lives with that 6.0 uh, that they had for uh, a couple years after the International 7.3. Uh, everybody loves to reminisce about the old 7.3 International that came in, oh, I believe it was 2001 and older, um, Power Strokes, diesels, uh, the 2500 and, or the 250s and the 350 Fords. But ever since then, they haven't had a good, reliable diesel motor. Uh, you can ask any Ford mechanic, they'll tell you hands down the Cummins is the way to go if you're going to use your truck for work. Uh, the Power Stroke has twice the moving parts inside of it and two more cylinders than the Cummins does. There's actual companies out there that specialize in removing a Power Stroke motor and installing the Cummins into new Fords, like real new Fords. You can go get your your new Power Stroke diesel de-stroked. So I believe that's one of the names of the companies. Is just get that thing de-stroked because it's just a time bomb. And I mean, I know a lot of guys that drive big trucks, and they are always having troubles with their Power Strokes. What do I got here? I got five minutes before I have to actually go get my truck. Right? Four, five. Um, uh, Duramax, uh, good motors. Uh, they had a big problem with injectors. So, and to replace one injector, 
because it's an eight cylinder. So at about 80,000 miles, expect to shell out eight grand to replace those injectors. Uh, another big thing that I don't like about the Chevys and GMCs, their heavy duty trucks, independent front suspension. There's just no question that a solid front axle is stronger. That's why there are conversion kits for the GMC and Chevy to rip out that chintzy independent front suspension and put in a solid front axle. All the Rams that are 2,500, 3,500, that's a, a three quarter ton and one ton, come with a solid front axle. Also, off-roading, even though these trucks aren't meant for off-roading, everybody knows a solid front axle is good for off-roading. Not Baja racing, but crawling around in the mountains, your solid front axle is way better than your independent front suspension. Don't mean to offend anybody that's got a Duramax or a Power Stroke. The, the facts don't lie and facts don't care about your feelings. Uh, there is just no arguing that the Cummins motor is better. Now we got it with the transmissions. The 3500 Ram comes with a nice and transmission. Class leading, no questions. The facts don't lie. You go down to a 2500, that's where there is this history of not so good transmissions. Uh, so I, the facts don't lie. Um, I'm, I'm a, yes, I'm a Ram fanboy, but I will admit where there are the shortcomings. It happens to be the transmission. If you abuse and heavily work that 2500 transmission, uh, you're going to need a rebuild. There's a huge, huge aftermarket for transmissions for that Cummins because of the shortcoming uh, of the, the stock transmission. And it's, it can be expensive. If you use a truck uh, as it's intended within its payload and towing capacities and you don't hot rod it out and uh, delete it and tune it, you're going to be fine with the stock transmission that comes with a 2500. Infotainment, class leading in a Ram. Uh, I was actually just at a GMC dealer two days ago looking at trucks. I, I was thinking about uh, the Denali HD and man, did it let me down, uh, both in backseat room and infotainment center. It's just, uh, I think in their next generation, they will upgrade all of that. Of course, the Ram, 2019 Ram, again, blew everybody away with a 12 inch screen. It looks like a dang Tesla. I'm a big fan of uh, power assisted motors. No, uh, not a fan of naturally aspirated. That's why the only half ton I would consider is the, the Ford EcoBoost, that 3.5 liter twin turbo EcoBoost. It's a little rocket ship. And because of the options you can get, you can get your EcoBoost, you can get the Super Crew Cab, which is really large. Uh, it's the largest for the half ton market. And you can get a six and a half foot bed but they're really rare. I shopped nationwide and I found like two and it, and it didn't have the options that I wanted. But you can order it and you can get it. Um, you gotta shop around. That's what I would get if I was going a half ton. Uh, and almost went that way. I uh, just couldn't find one. So I had to up my game a little bit and break out another $25,000. Backseat room. That was another major consideration for my purchase. Um, trucks are now becoming the family vehicle. I mean, my truck is literally a freaking tank. <laughs> uh, it's huge, it's loud, it's, it's flashy, it's bright. Um, you could run people off the road. <laughs> no, I don't drive like that. But you could if you wanted to. Um, so the, the truck that I got it has the largest back seat and the largest interior cabin space that you can get. Uh, so that was a major deciding factor and I was able to get the six and a half foot bed. Uh, you can't get that cab size with an eight foot bed. Uh, the eight foot bed is just a really, really long wheelbase, especially with the interior cab space that modern trucks come with. Uh, and driving around the city, uh, it's, it's a little much to manage. Uh, that's the truck my dad has. He's got the eight foot bed. 
and uh, he manages but he doesn't like driving it down here if you're getting started out and you're or you're focusing on your finances and building up the safety net getting your investment portfolio developed uh, building that reliable customer base that refers you to friends and family I would stick with a more conservative truck maybe a white one a white one not the color that I got you know you don't want to come off like you you need a lot you need to charge a lot of money to pay for that seventy eighty thousand dollar truck that's sitting out in front of their house so tonight I'm showing up to my first uh, customer appearance and it's uh, for a general contractor that I've worked with for a long time and I know he's gonna he's gonna give me some I don't know what he's gonna say but he's gonna look at my truck and be like what the hell is that <laughs> I can say hey you know what you've been paying me so much for so many years I got to spend it on something I'm going to film another video for this channel tonight I filmed the first part uh, earlier today so a lot of good quality content coming your way on the handyman business uh, hopefully you don't mind my truck reviews and truck talks I'm a truck guy I'm a car guy uh, hopefully a lot of you are uh, if you're not uh, I don't know cash your man card in in the comments below all right I gotta go get my truck goodbye <laughs>